Hello and welcome to the Network Planner demo. I'm Cornel Bullens and I'll be taking you to today's demo. So what is the Network Planner? When we were building the Network Planner, our objectives were to simplify network planning and administration within the Microsoft Office 365 ecosystem. The benefits for you is that this is one centralized location to plan for Microsoft services and administrate your networking environment for the Microsoft Office 365 ecosystem. The target audience for this network planner are the customers that are deploying or planning to deploy all their Skype for Business and or Teams workloads in Office 365. At this point, customers that are running hybrid or full on-prem, so customers that are, that are hosting users on-premises only or hosting users on-premises and in the cloud, um, will not be able to take full advantage of the network planner. So <clears throat> the features for today, um, what we'll be showing you is that uh, within the Network Planner, you can create multiple organizations and those organizations um, are each hosting a set of calculations. They represent your organization. Uh, maybe you need multiple, maybe you need one for um, testing and one for production. You can create, delete, edit and manage locations as networking sites. Um, so every office you have, you can represent the site. You can also um, import the sites in CQD format. Perhaps you're currently using CQD. Uh, you can also build create these sites using Excel and using the sample file that we've provided. You can then export these sites in CQD format, or you can export just all sites. Um, exporting and importing to and from uh, CQD gives you the advantage to have a nice GUI to make any changes to your CQD sites. You could also create an edit personas to reflect employee behavior, and then you can map these together so you can assign personas to sites within that organization to create benefit calculations and to start your network planning. You can get graphical reports for this and customized advice. With that, we're going to show you a demo of how this all works and to help you move forward use getting a quick start on the network planner. Let's start off with the Network Planner demo. So um, once you log into My Advisor and you click the Network Planner, you get this screen. Once again, I do want to emphasize that the Network Planner is aimed at customers that are, have hosted their users online only. So um, you are using the full online workloads for uh, Skype for Business or Teams. Um, maybe you have Cloud Connector Edition, maybe you have a hybrid scenario in which you're using the on-premises um, installation just for uh, calling, and that's fine. But um, if you currently have users on-premises, uh, or um, whether that's in a full on-prem installation or in a hybrid scenario, scenario if you're still hosting users on-premises, um, the right tools for you are the existing calculators and guidance, such as the Skype for Business Benefit Calculator. Now, I haven't done a calculation yet, so it says start my calculation. If I would have done one, it would have said manage my calculation. So I'm going to click start my calculation. The first thing it's going to ask me is to hey, create a new organization. So each organization will rep represent a, a calculation that you're doing. So um, right now I'm doing a calculation for Contoso. So I'm typing in Contoso and maybe I also want to do a calculation for future Contoso and a merger between Contoso and Fabrica. So I can create different sites and personas and calculations for each organization. For now, I just need one organization. So once I've created this, I go to sites and I can start creating my sites. Now, the nice thing about creating these sites is that uh, each site represents a physical location um, on which uh, users are using the services. Um, while um, creating these new sites, um, to do a basic calculation, all you need is a site name and a user account for each site. However, because we also support import and export to uh, uh, in a CQD file format, um, we really uh, like you to give us more information about these sites. We also have some reporting availability, so we can show you the type of reports that we are uh, building for you. 
And to get the most out of this, we really want you to complete all of the site information. This is also why we have created a difference between um, uh, incomplete, minimally complete and fully complete sites. Uh, basically, incomplete sites is uh, you're missing either user account or site name. Minimally complete is when you only have provided us those. And fully complete is when you've given us all information needed. So I can also download a sample Excel file here and then uh, complete that. Maybe I can email that to my networking team and ask them to complete it and then upload it. For now, I'll just use the manual add new site. So let's add two offices today. So for today, I'm going to add the skip whole office which is the location in the Netherlands. This is the Microsoft location. The building is called the Outlook. The building type is an office building. And the building type is also a building. Uh, location is at Skip Hall. So the postal code is 1118CZ in the Netherlands. The state is North Holland. And we'll leave the region blank. Once I've given all the building information, I'll go to network information. It's going to ask me the subnets. So let's say this is uh, 10 000 on a 24 sub, uh, subnet. I can also add 10 010. So these subnets will then be directly reflected in our CQD um, format should we export or import from that. So I have about 1400 users here. We're not using ExpressRoute. It is connected to the WAN. The WAN has a capacity of 100 Mbit. I'm using 10 Mbit for audio and 20 for video. The internet egress is local and the site internet link capacity is also 100 Mbit. The internet egress point is irrelevant because I'm using local internet egress and the site PSN egress point is local too. Click save and exit. As you can see, now that the skip all office is completed, you can see a fully completed site. We have supplied all the information we, we require. So I can now export this information in CQD format, uh, which will actually give me a CSV file with all the information for um, the skip all office. As you can see, two lines. This can be directly imported into CQD. Um, but we'll also add the Vienna office. So the site name is called Vienna. Um, uh, the organization name is still Microsoft. Uh, the building name, I don't know. Let's call this um, uh, 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 Viennese. Um, building type is an office building. The office type, office location. Vienna. Zip code is 1120. The country is Austria. Uh, how are you? Austria. The state, we're not going to complete that. So that's fine. Save and continue. So the site subnet. So this is actually using the 10.1.0.0. Once again, and 24 subnet range. And I can add as many subnets as I need. Um, so I, I'll also add a 16. So the site user account, we only have 500 people there. Oh, let's do 400. So connected to the WAN, a WAN capacity of 10 Mbit, 1, 2 for the video queue size. So some of the things that are interesting here is that if I'm connected to the WAN, I can also select that I'm actually using remote internet. So internet via the WAN. And it will also automatically show me the skip all office because that's the only site that would support this remote um, Correction. So basically now I have defined that all the internet traffic for Vienna will flow through the skip hole office. Um, this is to accurately reflect, reflect any usage you might have or any configurations you might have. Um, with that being said, um, also keep in mind you need to have the central sites first before you create these sites. Um, if I would not have a WAN, I wouldn't be able to change that because you need a WAN for remote internet egress. So uh, let's put this back. Uh, one of the other things I can also do is um, as a PSN egress point, I can also say, hey, you know, all my PSN traffic flows to a remote site. Once again, WAN must be active for that. So we'll also say it's a local uh, PSN egress, or let's just say skip all office. I do save and exit. I've now provided all the information, so it's fully completed. 
now that I have that, I can also do a quick check if I've provided the right information. And in the geographical view, you will see that it will show me the locations. So this is the location for, for Microsoft and the, here we have Vienna. Um, so this is just a very quick check to verify, hey, did I complete all the right information? Did I put all my sites in just to ensure that I've done the right things? So now that I have my organization, I have my sites. Let's start creating personas. Uh, the personas are used to represent a group of users within your organization. So let's start with creating office workers. They use all modalities medium. They're using PSTN calling or calling plan. And the PSTN usage is medium. I will also create a remote worker user, user which is actually using 50% of the time remotely and they are using CCE. Um, at this point, we only calculate CCE bandwidth for Skype for Business, not for Teams. They're using a medium PSTN usage here. Um, <clears throat> now that we have all of this, we're ready to move to the next portion. So we go to the calculator. So within the calculator, we start off with a persona distribution. Uh, we do want to note that um, should you need any help for any of these portions, you can always click here and you get taken to the help section of that um, relevant portion. So let's start distributing these users. So for the Schiphol office, I have 800 office workers. I've got 600 remote workers. For Vienna, 300 office workers and 100 remote workers. I save this and I press calculate. Now that this has been calculated, this gives me the, informa <coughs> the, the um, estimated bandwidth for the uh, use of these modalities. As you can see, um, well, each, each product actually uses um, uh, the modalities differently. And you will see different numbers for each um, product that we're using. So as you can see, um, for instance, within Teams, um, we don't have any PSTN numbers right now because we didn't select a compatible PSTN calling method. For um, Skype for Business, we did show all the correct numbers and the numbers of our estimated bandwidth here. Once this is done and you have your numbers, um, you can click on the report to get a nice graphical report. Please note that all these numbers are based around our initial testing and our initial uh, assumptions. And as the product matures, we will fine tune all of these numbers. Uh, the beauty of the network planner is that we can actively update um, the numbers in the backend based on real usage of our products. So now I have my numbers and you can export these into Excel so your networking team knows what's happening. And you can click the report button as will actually give you a nice overview of how these um, sites are being used. We do want to emphasize that this will only work correctly if you provided all of the site information, such as WAN sizing and uh, um, uh, audio and uh, video cues. You can see the calculated output here. It will tell you exactly what the estimated impact is and if this fits or not. And you can see the differences between Teams and Skype for Business and based on um, the usage, um, you can see whether or not you're using more than the available band bandwidth or not. You can also say how much, what's the percentage of the site link. I want to allocate the real-time communication traffic. And as soon as I save that, let's say I don't want to spend more than 5% of my bandwidth for real-time communication traffic, such as audio and video. As soon as I do that, you can see that Vienna is now suffering. So Vienna is using more than 5%. Um, this is a nice graphical output, so you can immediately... Uh, tell anyone that needs some information about, hey, are we ready to go to Teams or Skype for Business? They will, they will be able to see exactly what's happening here um, and how the output um, translates. It's just a nicer way of showing the numbers from before. We also have a portion here that's called recommendations. And those recommendations you have will, will be given based on your user distribution. So at this point, um, we have no recommendations, so you should be fine. So the WAN impact for the skip hole office will be 5 Mbit and Office 265 will be 14. Um, we also show you the real-time communication WAN and Office 65 Mbit. Of, Mbit. of course, everything in uh, Mbit per second. 
you can use the slider to distribute between teams and Skype for Business. You can see, hey, perhaps teams will um, uh, uh, require different recommendations than Skype for Business. And you can export this to PDF. Finally, there's a help page that contains all of the information about all of the different sections that we have. With that, I want to close this demo and I hope you can now start doing your own bandwidth calculations.